so this is my Sega Master System. I had gotten it originally on eBay, and uh, it's had a few problems. Uh, I bought it knowing that there were some problems because the person literally said, you know, it's a system from the 80s, you get what you get. It makes sense. You know, I got it for pretty cheap because of all of that. But uh, now I'm going to clean it up and uh, go ahead and get started on it. I bought it a few months ago, and so I'm not sure what I'm going to be looking at here when I do open it up to clean it up. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it looks like a mess on the outside, pretty dusty, so I'm going to go ahead and clean it up. I have played it since I've gotten it, but I had a problem the other day where I couldn't play a game. It wouldn't read the game, or it would give me system error. So now I'm going to go ahead and take it apart, clean it up, and see how it does. One of the things I noticed that was wrong with it right off the bat is the reset and pause buttons on the top front of the console. Uh, they were super spongy, and they never really actually worked. And so that uh, that is something I'm probably going to go ahead and fix while I'm in there looking at it. Um, Oh, these are satisfying screws, by the way. They they made a significant pop whenever I tried to open them, and it was just a beautiful thing. Nobody has been in here, and, and you know, so nobody's cleaned this up, so it's going to be foreign territory for me. But if you have a system that's this old and it's never been opened to be cleaned, then uh, you can pretty much expect problems. Notice that uh, clear tray there that I'm using. That is actually a tray that came out of my son's uh, battery pack for uh, his Switch. So I bought a new battery for his Switch so he could, uh, you know, continue playing. It turned out that that wasn't the issue, so I have an extra battery pack. So that might be a future crazy build because I have a couple of uh, Super Nintendo systems over here that we're going to be working on. But, uh, yeah... I got that tray. It's a pretty satisfying tray that uh, it works great to separate a few things. I'll put a few Q-tips in there too. Some of the tools of the trade, you know, Q-tips, alcohol, um, magic eraser, that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, so you'll see whenever I'm starting to try to clean it up, that's what I'm going to use. Uh, it's, it's a really great thing to have. And I actually got that. I have to credit that to... Uh, Adrian Black over at Adrian's Digital Basement. I watch him all the time. And so if you go over there and watch him and his 8-bit computer repairs and stuff, um, I'm kind of doing the same thing here with this uh, Sega Master System. This does have a Zilog Z80 chip set in it. And later on when I do the Nintendo, you'll see that it has a 6502, I believe, in it, which is also an 8-bit computer program. Um, wow. Processor. So, yeah, it's uh, th these are just little computers running the same little uh, processors and just doing a very specific thing. One of the cool things about the Sega Master System is it does have an operating system that pops in without having to have a game in it. And whereas the Nintendo was made purpose-built, game has to be in there for it to run. So, but yeah, we're just going to get to the uh, repair part. You'll get to see all of the little pieces here. So when I finally got it open, notice that there's a lot of rust there. I kind of showed it in the camera. And uh, as I was looking through, there was some uh, bug guts and uh, poop and uh, probably eggs as well that were in there. And it was really ugh, not great. I don't know where this was stored or where this was, but uh, I did clean the whole thing up uh, in this video. And uh, yeah, I, f I, f I found some nasty guys. I, I didn't... I don't think I have a, and you know, it's been months now that I've had it, and I don't have any of those creepy crawlies in my house, so I don't believe I infested myself using it. Uh, I think they were long since dead, but uh, yeah, it was just really icky in there. So I cleaned it all up, wiped all that up, threw away parts that I needed to, you know, that kind of stuff. I threw away the rag after after I cleaned all this up and the magic racer and all those things and got them out of the house real quick because I didn't want them to uh, survive at all. So here I'm just inspecting the board a little bit and uh, I'm looking at the uh, chipset. I don't see any corrosion or anything, maybe just a tiny bit around the uh, the 
uh, neutral plane there, the ground plane. The um, the whole thing is uh, pretty kind of scummy, but uh, looks pretty good for it being in, you know, from the 80s or whatever. So I just take a look at it here and uh, make sure that there's nothing broken on this side that I have to fix. And uh, I looked at the... Uh, um, buttons there, they're really spongy, they're not really working, so I am going to take them out and replace them with another button, and um, these buttons that I have have this really satisfying click noise, and it's amazing, so I really want to use that as the uh, base for these, so, and uh, then I'll take a Q-tip to this first with alcohol. The little bottle there has a little, uh, dropper in it and i bought like a two pack of those at the dollar tree for buck 25 you know and uh so they they really come in handy i got the 99 percent isopropyl in that uh little dropper and so i could just drop it on the board or drop it inside the uh magic eraser or on, right onto the q-tip and you'll see that i used pretty much all of those uh techniques here to clean this board I'm going to go ahead and speed this up just a little bit, like I have been with some of the other things, because, uh, you know, you, once you get into it, you're going to notice that the cleaning is pretty simple. You just surface clean real quick. Um, I am eventually going to inspect the other side of the board and try to make sure that all of my soldering joints are good. There are a couple of them that I really needed to work on, so I wanted to take a look at them. So, um, yeah, so just here we go. Notice I just went ahead and grabbed that magic eraser there. I'm going to use it on the board now. I cleaned that little bit up with the uh, Q-tip, but I figure the uh, magic eraser might work a little better. I'm kind of experimenting with these items because even though I got them from Adrian and Adrian knows how to use them, I'm still a little leery on exactly how to use them. But, uh, you know... I have to give credit where credit is due whenever it comes to the cleaning these things. I had no idea how to do it if it weren't for uh, watching his videos on this stuff. Seriously. So, yeah, it was a kind of a learning experience for me, but I uh, do learn. I do learn, and I did learn, and I got it figured out. And I really like the way these things clean things up. As you'll see in this video later, this thing is super pretty by the end of it. Of course, I also use Windex as well on the top and bottom of the plastic casing, and it just shines when this is done. Starting to get to the end of this cleaning now, and the uh, process is, uh, you know, pretty quick on this video because I sped it up. But uh, really, I haven't even gotten to the bottom of the board yet or saw what is uh, lurking underneath, so to speak. So, something to look forward to there, and uh, I'm just going to keep digging in on this, and it's just going to, it's just cleaning the surface, and then making sure everything's pretty, the, you know, not to spoil it or anything, but the underside of the board looks uh, dramatically better than the front, uh, top side of the board, but uh, hopefully you get to see that really soon. Well, since I'm editor-in-chief, I made it happen, right? So here's the back side of the board. It looks super clean. I'm just kind of giving it a little once over because there's a little bit of residue from like somebody soldered. So there's a little flux there and that flux must have been from the factory. So that was crazy because that satisfying click on all of those screws just made it. Um, we are going to have a little fun in the second part here where I actually do some soldering and take out those other pieces and you know one of them i have to do twice because it didn't quite work out but uh yeah it's uh this is a, a wonderful board everything's great i really enjoyed opening this up and taking a look at it and seeing how simple and yet awesome this board really was cleaned it up a lot but I can't wait for you guys to see what's lurking underneath it was cleaning up pretty good, but some of that stuff is being real awful stubborn. So I was in there for a little while trying to get it off of there, and it was all over the board. Or somebody spilt, like, Coke in there, and it wasn't coming up. But I don't think Coca-Cola would be the culprit in this case. Maybe a coffee or something, or a tea. 
because the corrosive value of coke is insane and none of all of the stuff would have been like corroded and eaten away if a uh, coke had been splashed in there there was a tiny bit of corrosion but there wasn't enough to really make me worry so yeah it was a it was a time where i'm just like okay well i'm gonna clean up as best i can just give it a little shine and move on with my life but it's a uh, yeah, so I really wanted to figure out the pins for those uh, switches, and I was pretty much done with the whole cleaning process at that point. After I finish cleaning up the board here, it will uh, I'll have to move it and get to the underside there where the bottom shield is, and you'll see that it has a little bit of rust as well. It's kind of a you know, all over, but it also has a little bit of something else in it that I just don't like. Um, the uh, bugs inside my machine really kind of freak me out, the physical ones, you know? So, I mean, yeah, it's it's not cool. I, if there's a few bugs in the software, that's okay, we could fix that. If there's bugs in the physical machine, I hate it. But, uh, yeah, so we're just going to take a look at this board now and we're going to lift up those shields and see how dirty it really is underneath the and the bottom there so we're going to get finished that cleanup and i'm going to go straight into the testing phase here because uh i'm just looking at uh, the sega master system want to make sure it's still working while it's out uh if you take a look here you'll see that it's very purple in that little screen capture and that's because of the vc500 made by diamond it does not detect that uh range that a normal analog device would and so it does have a little bit of mess up there whereas my hdmi to rca works perfect it does pick up that range and that's just because analog signals could be lazy um straight out if you had something that you know, send a signal out at 55 megahertz or something. A standard NTSC will still look at it and be like, okay, we'll work with it or something like that. But, you know, you could be a little off on your signal. You didn't have to be exact. In the digital age, you have to be a little more exact. So, yeah, that's why that's doing that. It does appear that the reset button does work, but my pause button does not. And I don't know if the pause button is just because the snail game doesn't allow for pause or what's going on there. But uh, yeah, so I do eventually get those out of there and put some brand new switches in there. And hopefully you'll get to see that. Here I'm starting with my hot air gun. I do have a dual system here where I have the hot air on one side and a soldering on the other. And uh, I'm just trying to use the hot air to melt the solder here. And uh, it's it's not working as well as I'd like. I mean, it does work, but it's just, you know, I got to get something under there to, to pull because there's four pieces to each one of these switches. And so... I had to get something under there just to pull it out there and just to get it going. And as you can see, I switched to my little smudger tool, which I melted uh, eventually. It did get hot enough to melt before I could even get that thing off of there. So, and the hot air was just coming off and hitting my hand and I was just starting to get burnt a little bit. But, um, you know, not too bad. Didn't really get me too terribly bad to where, you know, I needed to go anywhere or do anything. But it was hot enough for me to say, oh, I need to move. Um, I do eventually switch to the soldering iron. But that's 900 degree heat right there. So, yeah, it's it's pretty hot. Pretty hot. Um, of course, all of this is sped up because this is a little bit really boring part. But I'm really taking those two switches off. And I'm putting a uh, switch back on. And unfortunately, whenever I dug through my little... Uh, little stem box there that had my all my little things I got off of Amazon uh, affiliate link below the uh, it just didn't I, I just found the bigger switches and I was like I'm gonna try the bigger switch and it did not work at all I did have to take it back off of there and uh, redo it but you'll see that soon all right quick Notice there, you see that big yellow button I'm trying to use. Those are the bigger size buttons than the other ones. They are just uh, the little square cell buttons that they press down. They have a satisfied click, and it's really wonderful. I don't know how 
well they're going to be upheld inside the system, but I got a feeling they're going to be good for quite a while and uh, everything because that was a pretty high quality kit. I got it and I was really super surprised. It has a nice bed breadboard and, and none of that stuff is actually supposed to be soldered. It's all so you can plug into the breadboard and uh, make cool contraptions that way. But, uh, you know, it was great for pulling out everything because everything is real and I can solder it to a board so I'm going to and that thing was only like 14 or 15 dollars or something like that but there is the uh, affiliate link at the bottom you see you can check out that current price anyway I'm I was uh using those buttons there's LEDs there's jump wires all kinds of things inside that kit so it's really great to use for small repairs like this um, can't really build anything major with it, but hey, it, a small repair is, you know, pretty right up its alley. And I like having it around because it's super compact. And as you can see, I have very limited space on my workbench. Extremely limited. Sometimes I'm using space that you guys can't see because I'm, you know, first off, I poorly put the camera in a spot. But um, I will work on that. Other than that, I'm using part of the spot where the camera it points to in the center, and so I'm just working away here. But once I get that button on, I'm going to test it, and I'm going to find that it is not good at all. So it's it's one of those things. Uh, if you see that see that wooden piece with the four arms coming off of it, that is actually something I built. It's a DIY project that I built out of uh, some Dollar Tree components. So it's a four clip alligator clip uh, holder so that whenever you're doing soldering, you can have things being held on. Now, I think this board is probably the limit of its weight. So that's uh, <laughs> that's why I struggled with it. And one of the arms broke off because I uh, was too rough with it. But uh, it was just the soldering point that broke off because I'm not that great at soldering. I don't know if you've noticed. Uh, but that is Dollar Tree stuff. That is um, the screws are from Dollar Tree. I bought a package of screws from Dollar Tree. I bought that wooden piece from Dollar Tree. And that's four book lights from Dollar Tree. I use these book lights a lot for a lot of DIY projects because I'll need like a bendy thing. Like the microphone I'm using right now has a wind screen that is definitely be, being held up by one of those lights as it is. And uh, I have one on my desk that uh, for some reason was not working the day of recording. And then I have the alligator clips that are on there are actually from Amazon. They came as part of a set of a bunch of alligator leads that I could use to just clip on to things and, you know, test stuff. But I went ahead and sacrificed two of those wires so I could build that thing. And I am happy that I did that. So anyway, those are my little tricks. And now you can see me putting it all together here. If you notice, I will be putting that uh, cover back on and it just seems to fit a little rough. And uh, so I am actually going to take that off of there and I, I do test the button. I do test to make sure that these buttons work the same way those other buttons do. I'm currently looking at the motherboard and everything so far and I'm extremely happy with it, but I'm gonna go ahead and take that particular item out because I need those smaller buttons in there and so I do I do I take these buttons out and I uh, move on because I really wanted to make sure that I could uh, press those buttons while the case was closed and since that larger button made it impossible for that button to press I went ahead and got a smaller button going Again, I was trying to find a few different options here where I could use and uh, everything to get those buttons back off to make it a little easier. But I ended up finding that I did have a desoldering gun and it was just one of those little pump ones with the, like a pen-like one. But it does end up working really well to get rid of that solder if you know how to use it. It's plastic, so it melts pretty easily, but 
I do use it and it does work. Um, I tried anything to hold on to this uh, soldering gun just right. It wasn't working for a little bit. The tip wasn't heating up. I found that uh, it was just me. <laughs> My novice uh, soldering skills had made it to where I have uh, been using it just a little bit wrong. I needed to clean the tip just a little bit more than I have been and make sure that it has good contact whenever that happens. That way I can just use the tip of the soldering gun instead of the actual uh, intermediary part. And I tried whatever I could here, as you can tell, to get that off of there. And I, it was just really hard for me to get that uh, melting at the right point, just because I had so much solder on that uh, tip. And so once I figured it out, I cleaned it up and it worked instantly better. Like everything went molten, everything is great. So I, I did get it figured out eventually, but here I am, the novice playing around with my Sega Master System, pretending like I know what I'm doing. And uh, <laughs> it turned out well this time, but uh, you know what? You'll be get better through practice. So um, what better practice would it be than to just practice on my own video game system? If I break it and it's my fault and I have to buy a new one, well, it's just my fault. So yeah, definitely a thing that, uh, you know, nerve wracking to me, but... At the same time, it was a learning experience, and I loved every second of it. The uh, board and me were not working out very well, though, and I had to move things back and forth and all kinds of stuff. I eventually got that second button in, and that but second button didn't go in quite as flat as I'd like at first, so I had to move things around like that, too. But, uh, yeah, so if you look now, you'll see that there's a... Uh, soldering gun in hand and I am going to use it and it works out pretty well those those holes just appear out of nowhere really quickly so whenever I do re-solder this I'm going to make little balls of solder to fall into those holes first and then I'm going to melt everything and put it in there so you'll get to see that as well And this is the finished product. I'm going to go ahead and test it one more time just to see if it works. And I'm going to go ahead and put OutRun in there like I have been. Move it up there a little bit. My uh, power button's still a little flaky. So no matter what I do, that button is not going to work quite right. It is a plunger button that is just completely worn out. And I don't know that the type of button that they use here is actually in service anymore. I have noticed that Nintendo's seem to have the same one, but we'll see what happens. I could put a new new button in there. It just has that satisfying click and be done with it, but I'd have to run wires and make sure it's braced to the right place and all that stuff. So I don't want to do that. I'd rather have it as the plunger button that it is. And so I'm preparing for my little test here. I'm just plugging in my controller so I can start the game. I'm going to press the power, and of course it goes spongy on me. It's a little fickle. I have to touch it and play around with it a little bit. I'm going to have to get some uh, deoxit, as uh, Adrian would say, and uh, deoxit that uh, switch just to make it not so scratchy. If you notice, those buttons work great. My reset button is working great. And these are the new clicky buttons, so it goes click, click every time you press it. As a matter of fact, I can let you hear it here because I have that system right next to me. I'm just going to bring it up to the microphone and... Yeah, it's like a satisfying click-click noise. Beautiful. Instead of having that spongy button anymore, yeah, it's it's good. So it's a, a wonderful sound, and I it, it tells me that it, it turns off or it pauses whenever it does it. And both buttons do work right now, so it's great. As always, if you've liked this content, please hit that like button. If you're considering subscribing, you're teetering on whether you should or not, well, you know, it's a reversible thing, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. And, uh, you know, you want to get notified for all the video content that I'm putting out there, go ahead and hit that bell and ring it loud. And then, you know, give me some comments. Tell me what I'm doing good, what I'm doing bad. And I'll, I'll take anything. Yeah. 
anyway, uh, thank you everyone for watching and uh, have a wonderful day.